This is Kimberly Quinn, host of the Minecraft podcast, and I can't tell you how much fun I have had doing this podcast. I, I started when the world closed over the pandemic in, a, in an attempt to spread some positivity out there and give people some strategies to enhance their own well-being and reduce anxiety and all of that. Now, two years later, we're still going strong and now listened to by 52 countries across the world. And I've even helped some of my students get going with their own podcasts. It's super easy to do. And I'll tell you, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it is the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. I'll just explain for you. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is a ball. Start today. Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am thrilled to be here today. We've got a real snowy day going on. I'm all snuggled up and ready to have a chat with you about uh, restoring serenity to your day. Really about restoring serenity to your day. And I think most people have heard the serenity prayer. I I, uh, and it's also secular, you know, it doesn't, it isn't, you know, it doesn't apply to any one particular faith anymore. Um, but it started from a man, a man's name, Reinhold Niebuhr, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And I think he was a, he was a Protestant theologian, I believe. So it's definitely a Christian prayer, but though it's been now used and expanded to be in the 12 step programs. And I, that's where I remember it from is hanging around Alcoholics Anonymous when I was about 12 with a parent in recovery. And even it made sense to me then in my, you know, young head. And, and you'll see it written in a little bit different in some different ways, but it's just so important and so applicable to today's, you know, media saturated, fast paced world. I mean, I think we just lose track of not just the value of our, our moments, therefore our life minutes, um, but that we really can have a serene day, even with things going on. So anyway, just the first part of it goes like this. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I remember when I went to the anniversaries and things as a kid, and I was also, quite honestly, I was shallow how because I was also there for the those huge cakes with the high test frosting and those big flowers. My sister and I used to argue over who got the corner piece and the flower, just a little sidetrack. Anyway, that's the only part that they said when I was there. And then I actually looked it up before doing this podcast and it, it's longer. I'm definitely, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. The next few little phrases though are so important. Um, so after the wisdom to know the difference, it says living one day at a time. Oh my gosh, living one day at a time. And I don't remember who said this to me when I was a kid. And it was all around that area of the 12 step programs. And, and somebody said to me, because they were just, oh my God, such old souls floating around in that meeting that most of us, you know, we, we can handle what happens in one day, I'm not saying it's easy. It's, it's when we allow it to pile on like Mount Everest that we feel overwhelmed and throw in the towel. When really, if we look at this day is unattached to any other day, it's not attached to yesterday, last week, last month, 10 years ago, and it's not attached to the future because it isn't here yet. And that is just the wisdom of that. Just that one phrase all alone brings serenity to me. Um, and then the next, after that, it says living one day at a time. Then it says enjoying one moment at a time. And it, it's interesting because I, I see the shortened version of the serenity prayer all over. And this is just every bit as important as those first three phrases, enjoying one moment at a time. And from a cognitive psychology perspective, which is what my doctorate is in, neurologically this has meaning because the brain can only do one thing at a time. And people say, oh, I'm such a good multitasker. No, you're not. You're probably a, a nervous, frantic wreck if, you're, if you think you are because the brain can only do one thing at a time. Neurons can only focus on one thing at a time. So it looks like multitasking is actually a quick shift in attention. That's really all that is. 
all that is. And then the third phrase that I that goes right after that one, it says, after we say, enjoying one moment at a time, taking this world as it is and not as I would have it. I love that because it's this huge acceptance of, of this go with, the, go with the flow. It makes me think of the uh, sea turtles in Nemo, just kind of going with the flow, taking life as it comes. Because here's the thing, we really don't have another choice. <laughs> life is going to do what it's going to do, and we can either roll with it or let ourselves get upset. I mean, the wisdom the wisdom of this prayer is amazing. And um, and until this minute, I, I, I think, I didn't realize it's just the next three phrases that follow the first three phrases. I wish were included more when you see it out in the world because that's some big, huge, big, huge wisdom going on right there. You know, not, I'm honestly sitting here chuckling because here I am in the most, if you can picture this, it's like an L.L. Bean cover or something. It's a very chilly day in Northern Vermont. The snow is coming down. Um, I'm having a remote day and the fire is going in the wood stove and Giovanni, the golden retriever is right next to me taking a nap and, it, and I unplugged the, the, the landline. So I don't have any interruptions. This is this, I'm in a serene mode having this conversation with you. And uh, for real, I mean, it's just, it's just my cup overfloweth right now. And that said, I'm thinking of an example that's also me in a different life minute uh, or minutes, you know, when I, I think of, you know, when I, you know, I, I've done this before where I, you know, brushing my teeth and I was, this is not recently because I've totally, totally kind of, not totally, I'm a work in progress, but I've got somewhat of a grip on it. But I'm thinking of when I've been in a hurry and brushing my teeth or something. And then I actually go while the, while the microwave is still making its noise to get my tea out. And I'm like brushing my teeth and I'm like 30 seconds left. And then it's going to beep and I kind of take the tea out and then go back and spit in the sink. That is re so ridiculous. And I'm humbly admitting to you while I'm sitting with total serenity right now with the fireplace, the uh, wood stove going in the, in the golden retriever and phones unplugged and everything that because I'm, I'm a work in progress, that has also been my reality and more than once, or you know, I go into the bedroom to get something and then I notice that the laundry is stacked up and and, it, and instead of focusing on, on just brush your teeth, brush your teeth. And now that I'm way more along the road with mindfulness than I was with that example I just said to you, we can be mindful doing anything. We can be mindful brushing our teeth. And actually, well, I have another example. And this was this morning. I was just about actually... I had some great ideas for uh, uh, my, the Minecraft YouTube channel, and I stopped myself. and I and I I did actually I did jot them down so I didn't lose them, but I dropped jotted them down very quickly because I was about to do the dishes, and I believe it or not, I was looking forward to do, doing the dishes because after twenty five years or whatever, we finally got a new kitchen, and I love keeping it clean. It's actually joyful for me. It's it's it is serene, and I said, you know what? Wait, I don't have to jump into that videos. And I love doing them. It's not that. It's just that I was already started with the dishes. So I actually, there was a, a, like a small success for me here because I wanted to jump right into the other thing. I said, this will maybe take 15 minutes. Let's enjoy the hot water. Let's just get the dishes out of the sink and put them all away. Then there's closure. The counters are clean. And then you can go move on and do what you are passionate about, which is, um, passionate, one of many things, teaching, all things well-being, and doing the YouTubes and these podcasts, and it worked, and it was great, and that was a, a small success that I had this morning, so I thought I would share that with you, and I actually, so I actually mindfully, I mindfully did the dishes. I literally enjoyed the hot water, especially since our house is so cold. I enjoyed the closure of putting them away. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a success. So here's the thing, right? So the lastly is to, you know, since we've debunked the whole multitasking thing, since we know it doesn't exist, we therefore don't have to set the bar there, right? To be these great multitaskers, since it doesn't exist. We can only, we can only from a neurological perspective, neuropsychological perspective, do one task at a time. That's just how it is. And so once we accept that, we are off and running. And Remember that this day is not attached to any other day, not yesterday, not tomorrow, not 10 years ago, not 10 years from now, right? And to live in this moment exactly as it is, to really live the serenity prayer, 
to to um, ex, you know to uh, real, literally to accept the uncontrollables, right? And the courage, and I and also maybe add in their strength to to control what we can control, and then the wisdom to really be able to differentiate one from the other, what we can control and what we can't, and to just let go, just let go and take life as it comes. This is what we're talking about. This is how we bring serenity into our lives because we do not have to be neurotic and frenzied and rushing around. Life, whatever curveballs are flying around out there are going to happen anyway. So it's kind of like thinking of it as whitewater rapids or something. You can either be in the river, you know, being tossed around and banging against rocks, or you can step out on the riverbank and observe it all. The river's still flowing. Everything's still happening, but you're not getting bounced around and crazy. You're just, you're observing it in a far more relaxed state. And, and by stepping out of that current, we're also stepping out of fear-based thinking too. We don't need to be fear-based. We just don't. Those are just there are really there there is there are there is really no fear. Only people thinking fearful thoughts. Same thing with stress. There is no stress either. Just people thinking stressful thoughts. So there you have it. How to bring serenity into your day, each and every day of your valuable valuable life minutes. Just to slow it down, one task at a time. Step out of the river. And the other thing is uh, that you surprisingly, when people sort of um, become masters at this, not even, just anywhere along the way, it's going to be improvement, right? Is that you'll, fi- ironically, you'll find yourself getting much more done and it with less effort. That's the irony in it, okay? So there you have it. Serenity, bring it back into your day. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, very serene day.